Okay. We're gonna go back to the forest. Don't question me, Mashta, okay? I didn't even mean to do that. I meant to press ask. I'm scared. I'm surprised he's not questioning it. Questioning it. Oh, the mushrooms. Oh, no, the mushrooms are still there. I was looking at the trees. That made me dizzy. We've returned to the grounds of the shrine once again. What the hell? Why the fuck are we out here again? I have something to tell, Mr. Cockatee. Come again? Just wait here, Maishta. I head toward the inner area of the grounds by myself. Mr. Kokuri's, I mean Masaki Kiyohara's corpse, is resting there. A man whose life and family were ruined by Fox Lakata. To add insult to mortal injury, these mushrooms are growing on his corpse as if mocking his tragedy. Return the red demons to where they belong. If red demons are referring to Fox Lakata, then there's no other place they'd belong more than right here. Take a look at this, Kiyohara. I take the creepy petri dish from my bag. And then throw it into the nearby bush. That should be enough, right? Tell me what you did there. I threw out the peachy dish. You crazy. Fox the Carter wasn't supposed to be taken outside this forest. This is what Mr. Cockerty wants. Is that so? Empathizing with the dead again, aren't you? One of these days you're gonna get dragged into some shithole by their feelings. Maybe I will. But this is how I do things. Live your life. But remember, there won't always be someone there to drag you back out of that hole you end up in. I know. You heard that, Kiyohara? Once we're over this hurdle, I'll tell the cops what happened to you. Have them reopen the investigation. When that time comes, this forest will be filled with people. Just hold tight for a while. And now I want to go to the facility room, faculty room, um, and look at the floppy disk if I'm allowed I don't know if I have to do that later but it seems pertinent to this case so I don't know why I wouldn't be able to this is just way too long red here too. You must be kidding me. What on earth is this? Toilets are flushing, the piano is playing. Who would have thought the paranormal phenomena um, would occur in the new building as well? This is the first time I've witnessed a spirit operating as strongly and brazenly, brazenly as this. What if the special building is also... Come on, Yashiki. Yeah, I'm going to the, uh, the faculty place first. allowed. The special building is as peaceful as ever. The lights haven't turned red like the ones in the other buildings. Okay. Finally, some peace and quiet. What was that phenomenon, though? I've got an idea, though it's just a hunch. Both the female doll and Konoehara Academy changed once the departed transformed. That can't be mere coincidence. That reminds me. We should check what's on that floppy disk before we go see that old hag. Just in case that bastard's not gone for real, I want to know all that we can about him. You have a point. 
We do still have some unsolved mysteries regarding Mr. Cockerty. Not to mention that the doll also said his resentment is still lingering. And if that's true, our lives will be at risk until that resentment has been placated. All the stuff concerning the departed and the red lights is certainly worrisome, but we better focus on Mr. Cockerty as the imminent threat. Got it. Let's go to the faculty room. Okay, we have to. That's fine. There's your laptop there. The faculty room is empty at this time of night. I need to find that laptop quickly. Right there. Yoshi. There's a laptop on the desk. We can check the data on the floppy disk with this. You do the work, Master. This isn't my cup of tea. Fine. Mashta turns on the laptop and then inserts the floppy disk. Hmm. They're documents from 10 years ago. Judging by the file format, it should still be somewhat readable using the pre-installed word processing software. I shouldn't have to install a special reader. Mashta may as well be speaking a foreign language. I don't understand a thing they said. After a while, some text finally appears on the screen. This is... I'm writing this here just in case. I summoned Kei to the forest. Kei is Mitsuru Kuro Kurumine. He's a hooligan. He'll probably bring his gang of thugs with him. So I've decided to bring my hunting rifle. I've become a demon, both physically and mentally. The next fox demon of this cursed forest. I'll terrorize them and kill every single one of them. Even if I die or sacrifice my soul, I shall destroy my enemies. Seems like a farewell note. And this Masaki Kiyohara dude. He's probably our Mr. Kokuri. Well, that's what we said, yes. Adding Kiyohara's notes to note to the other information we have thus far, we can see the whole story. Ten years ago, Kiyohara's wife and child were murdered by delinquents at Lake S. The boys were junkies addicted to Fox Lakata. And the one who sold them was, Hulig was Hooligan K. K was Kuromine, a delinquent from Konoehara Academy. After learning his identity, Kiyohara summoned Kuromine and his friends to the forest with the intention of getting revenge, and at that moment he became the fox demon of the cursed forest. Wearing white clothing complete with a fox mask, he copied how Mr. Kokuri looked. He probably saw something of himself in the spirit who killed hooligans that disgraced the shrine. However, he never got his revenge. Kuromine, Kuromine and his friends killed him and buried him in the forest. That skeletal corpse was Kiyohara. His resentment still lingered on even after his death. Thus, his regret became a spirit. Oddly enough, a spirit that looked like Mr. Kokuri. And that is how his revenge began claiming hooligans addicted to Fox Lakata. One of them being Kakuta. Yeah, he was addicted to that, I guess. That's why he knew about the Petri dish. I guess we've learned enough. Let's report this to Yasuoka and the others in the infirmary. What's wrong, Mashita? Nothing. For some reason, I feel like I've heard the name Mitsuru Kuromine before. When you were still a detective? Yeah. Oh well, no need to force myself to remember right now. Let's just get back to the infirmary. We should share the information we have about Mr. Kokuri with the others. They should be waiting for it. Let me just save it first. I should really start saving over different things because I don't know if I'm doing things wrong. Welcome back, you two. Mind telling us what happened out there? I tell them all the events that happen that have happened up to this point, including the moment when the departed devoured Mr. Kokuri and transformed. A sight that only I could see, a sight I wished was merely a hallucination. The, a spirit transformed after devouring another spirit. I've never heard of such a thing before. What a monster. It doesn't make any sense. Don't scare me like that. The three mark bearers all take this news differently. Shocked and confused. Honestly, I feel all their emotions. What if this transformation made them stronger? That would explain the red lights from earlier. Does that mean things have taken a turn for the worse? Most likely. I wonder what they're planning next now that they've gained power and transformed. More terrifying things may be in store ahead. Awful.
Heavy silence falls over the infirmary. The departed has grown stronger, and there's nothing we can do about it. Our sense of fear grows alongside the sense of powerlessness that we feel. The phone on the desk is ringing. I should answer it. Hello? It's Maruhashi. I've charged um, Kakuta's phone. Have you checked what's on it? Of course. I'll tell you what it says now, so you better take notes. I prepare to write down the contents of Kakuta's phone as Maruhashi relays it to me. Contents of Kakuta's phone. There's a series of messages from MK. Oh. We know who that is. MK had entrusted Kakuta to manage the fox Lakata in the forest, but when their secret was about to be exposed, he told Kakuta to dispose of them. He threatened to tell the world about Kakuta's assault case if Kakuta betrayed him. Kakuta reluctantly agreed to help. MK didn't send any messages after for two weeks, until today after school, when Kakuta got two new messages from him. However, the text was too garbled to decipher. Okay, so... Okay. MK. I recall the time I saw Kakuta in that storage room, so it wasn't Mr. Kokuri, it was, um, I can't remember his name, Kuromine. He was murmuring something while looking at his phone. I was summoned, I have to go, or else I'll be killed. MK, so that was a red herring back then. That's, in, that's, that's, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. It's pretty clear he was acting under MK's direction. That Kakuta's a pretty messed up kid for someone who's a dis disciplinary committee member. Kakuta didn't have anything to do with the Lake S incident. However, he got himself mixed up with Fox the Carter because of MK's blackmail. And that's how he met his end. Mr. Kokuri, Kiyohara won't forgive anyone who's addicted to Fox the Carter. Thanks, Maruhashi. I, I was just repaying my debt since I caused you trouble before, alright? I'm hanging up now. Say hi to Miss uh, Yasuoka for me. It was that girl, right? What did she say? I tell the others everything Maruhashi told me. Hey, MK. You think they're the person named K mentioned in the Lake S murder case? I do. In Kiyohara's farewell note, K's full name was Mitsuru Kurumine, which means that K from the Lake S case has the initials MK. It's a pretty likely fit for him to also be the MK who was messaging Kakuta. Kurumine, Kurumine continued to gather Fox Lakata secretly even after the Lake S incident. He exploited Kakuta's weakness and had him watch over his crops. What's with the frown, Mashta? I knew it. I know Mitsuru Kurumine. That jogged my memory. So? Is he a criminal you've arrested in the past? No, the opposite. Mitsuru Kurumine is a cop. He's a career bureaucrat in the Metropolitan Police Department. His pops is in the top brass, so he joined the cops because everyone expected he'd just follow in his pops' footsteps. Wait a minute. He wasn't prosecuted, but Kurumine was still a, sus a suspect in the Lake S case, and he's still selling Fox Lakata. How is it possible that a fiend like that can still be a cop? Cops are just people. There's saints and fiends in every group of people. Doctors, teachers, military cops. And like I said earlier, his daddy's top brass. Sweeping a case like this under the rug would take some effort, but his pops was so high up, he could definitely take care of it. Are you serious? So he escaped punishment for Lake S, and he's blackmailing students to do his dirty work even now? What a shameless scumbag. That's exactly the kind of guy Kuromine is. A selfish asshole who'd stoop to anything so long as it gave him a, the slightest benefit. In addition, Kiyohara's spirit is unable to find peace due to that miscreant. How unforgivable. Is there anything more we can do, Mashta? Nope. It's out of our hands. No matter what evidence we find, we'll never be able to take him to trial. What do you mean by that? Kuromine is already dead. What? I remember reading about it in the newspaper about half a month ago. He died while relaxing at the lake. Accidental death, they say. And that lake he was relaxing at. You guessed it. Lake S. What a coincidence. Or maybe it wasn't a coincidence at all. For an arrogant, entitled man with power like Kuromine, the deceased must have seemed as powerless as the living. To him, spirits were just another made-up construct like morals or dignity that he could disregard. That's why he could kill so easily. 
But for those like us, we know the grudges of the dead aren't just ghost stories. The deceased are not powerless. That concludes our investigation for the night. Not everything is cleared up. There are some mysteries that remain unsolved. But there's no one left who can resolve those mysteries. Both Kakuta and Kuromine are dead. I start getting ready to leave school, though I'm still feeling uneasy for some reason. I did everything I could, right? Welcome back, Yashiki. Did you lock the door? Yeah. Did they force you to work as a janitor, too? You're putting way too much effort into this. Hey, we can't let people loiter inside the school or the number of victims is going to increase. As soon as the words leave my mouth, I feel how empty they are. Hiro and Mashita are the only ones in the infirmary. There's no sign of Yasuoka. Where's Yasuoka? I called a taxi and sent her home. I mean, this is usually bedtime for geezers, right? She's way too energetic for her age. You're really rude, you know that? If I hear you're being charged with harassment, I'm totally going to believe you're guilty. I've never harassed anyone in my life. Don't we head home now, too? I'll drive you both to the station as thanks. Having lost both his wife and child in a brutal incident, Kiyohara investigated things himself and found the true culprit, K, a.k.a. Kuromine. However, he couldn't get his revenge and was beaten to death by some hooligans. His intense resentment turned him into the spirit named Kokuri. Using Kakuta's weakness, Kuromine ordered the boy to manage the fox Lakata in the forest, a source of income for him. But was, M was the MK who had been texting Kakuta really Kuromine? Even more unsettlingly, after the departed devoured Kokuri, it transformed. What is going on? Oh yeah, if, if MK was texting Kakuta today, but he died like a month ago? How is that possible? Am I m missing something? Even though the text was garbled, right? After checking whether or not the door is locked, we leave the special building, and then we head to the main gate. For now, there's nothing we can really do about the red lights in the school. If it is really a spirit's doing, everything should be back to normal once the sun rises. Oh yeah, that's true. You know, because spirits hate the sun. By the way, Yashiki, give me back my paper bag. You can keep it if you like it so much, though. Um, I'll give it back. You can have it. You can take it. Why would I want such a dangerous thing anyway? I take the gun from the paper bag and hand it back to Mashita. What in the world are you doing now? I just want to go home already. We're just leaving. <laughs> My car slowly leaves the school and heads towards M Tower Station. They should be able to catch the last train. Love you guys. Stay, Yashiki. Mashita mumbles in the passenger seat, eyes fixed on the scenery outside. I glance at him, indirectly telling him to continue. He must be tired. His complexion looks darker than usual. Kakuta went to the fox forest this evening. He got an order from MK, Kuromine. Yeah, he did. Don't you find that weird? Oh, it could have been the departed, right? They always pretend. Now he mentioned it. Something about that doesn't feel right. The thought gets stuck in my mind. What's wrong with it? The message itself, it shouldn't have been there because he died. That's what I just said. So you picked up on it too, huh? Of course. Kuromine died half a month ago. Okay, it was, I was close. It's impossible that he's the one that sent that message. So there's a chance that MK isn't Kuromine. It's the departed, right? The previous messages before Kuromine's death must be from him, but the message he got today was strange, even the fact that the text was garbled. In the first place, how could Kakuta even read that message when it was garbled? Everything's just so confusing. If the departed can call out people on the phone, then surely they can do something with the... the text. Hey. Hiro, who's sitting in the back seat, cuts in. Can you give it a rest already? This case is solved. I feel sorry for Kakuta, but what's done is done. But... 
Let's be grateful that we managed to survive tonight. Just focus on what you have to do, or else you'll go insane. Oh, Hiro. My job is dissecting animals, you see? There are times when I feel depressed after thinking about the value of life and the animals I've had to kill. I can't even pretend that all the testing I've done is for the pursuit of science and the betterment of society. I'm not good at fooling people. Haha. <laughs> Take a glance at the rearview mirror. Her smile looks somewhat self-deprecating. You know why I can continue doing my job. Because I realize that's just how life works and I've got to do what I need to do. We're not gods. We're not rulers. We can't save everyone. We can't just change the world. It's a good point. Be still, uh, but still remain silent. I don't know. Yashiki seems to want to believe in the best at all times. Oh, really? Haha. <laughs> So you believe you can be a god, huh? Well, no, not that. That's an amusing level of delusion for someone who's your age. It's not really what I meant. I drop Master and Hiro off at M Tower Station. Then I drive on through the night, heading towards Kujo Mansion. As I arrive at the mansion, the phone rings. I can't even relax. Who's calling this late at night? Hello? It's Kimikawa. Sorry for calling so late. What's wrong? Mm, I can't stop thinking about Mr. Kokuri's case. Are you alright? I survived at least, but Kakuta's dead. Huh? The karate man? Yeah, I failed again. Share the night's events with Michio. I don't really want to do that, but okay. I realize that I shouldn't talk about it with a student, even though she's trying to help me. However, my mouth starts going before I can think about it, and it'd be more trouble to stop talking once I've started. Maybe I'm just too exhausted to care. No, there's something weird about that then, right? That's weird. It's twice he's been able to un unable to stop himself. Oh, I see. I get why you're blaming yourself, but it's not your fault. It's the Departed's. We need to put a stop to the Departed quickly. We'll help you figure out who it is. Why? Why are you still helping me, even after everything terrible you've gone through? Is it really just curiosity? At first, yeah, but now. I'm doing this because I don't want you to die. You saved our lives and you understand our curse. That made both of us so happy because we didn't think we'd ever have the guts to tell anyone about it again. Michio. Remember this, Mr. Yashiki. You're not just a teacher to both Hime and I. You're our precious teacher. Me? That precious teacher? I never expected anyone to call me that when I'd been told I'd have to fill in as a temporary teacher. I should feel some kind of pride over it, but it triggered a memory of something Mashita told me. What you should do is start looking at everyone around you as a potential suspect. Um, are you listening, Mr. Yashiki? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was spacing out a little bit. Guess I'm just exhausted from tonight. Well, that's natural. Sorry for taking your time. Have some rest. Good night. Sometimes they translate this, I can tell they've translated it so li literally, like, have some rest. You should, you, they should have translated it as like, you should get some rest, not have some rest. Suspect everyone, huh? That's tough to do. Yeah, see, he wants to see the best in people, so of course he'd be like, but still, I believe I can make a change. Not that he can become a god, but that he can make a change. The night goes on, yet I can't bring myself to go to sleep. I'm afraid to close my eyes. No, afraid to even turn off the lights. My eyes flit over to the window, displaying the moonlight out moonlit night outside, triggering a memory from earlier tonight. The departed was roaming about with their new body. I recall what they said. Now I'm convinced that you're my real husband. All these incidents must have been some sort of test to see if I'm worthy of being their husband. And it seems like those tests have ended tonight. The Departed has acknowledged me as their real husband. The ending that the Departed desires. I feel like the day is fast approaching when I'll be asked to exchange vows at the school grounds. All lit in red. And the red doll. What does she have to do with anything? I thought that said bad. I thought that said bad in the corner. I was like, oh fuck. I fucked up. Save your progress. Absolutely. The following day at Kujo Mansion.
Hello? Ita Nakamatsu here. Oh, hi. Thanks for your help last night. What do you want? Um, actually, Miss Yasuoka called me this morning to tell me something. The departed's figure is getting darker and darker each day. You should back away from this now. Oh. Coming from a spiritualist like Yasuoka, those words would carry some serious weight. No wonder he's scared. Ita's information has really been a great help, but... With all the people we've lost on this case, there's just no way I can try to talk him into risking his life to help me out. I got it. You were a great help. Thanks for all the work you did for me. Oh. I'll get back to teaching you how to work a computer once this case is all done. We'll start with internet use. That'll be something nice for you to look forward to, Yashiki. Yeah, thanks. This is fine. The depart is wrath. Lokshu. Shibito no tatari. I leave the mansion and head to Konohara Academy. I have to report last night's events to Mr. Konohara. I enter the special building and walk toward the infirmary. As usual, there's nobody inside. I'd better go to the faculty room. Mr. Conlow is waiting for me. Anyone here? There's no one in the infirmary. The notification light on my phone is blinking. Looks like I've got a voicemail. Okay. I press the button to play the audio. Oh, hey, sure. What's up, old man? It's me. Uh, you see? Fuck, the words ain't coming out. I got a shit ton of things to say to you, you know? Oh, well, I'll just spit out what's in my head. Do you know why I've been laying low all this time? It's because of Mashta. He said he'd call the school on my mum if I stuck my nose in. Damn it, this is so unfair. But you know what he said that time? If me and Yashiki go down, you're the relief pitcher who will have to come in and close this thing out. So you better not go and do something stupid like betray my trust, Nagashima. For some reason, I feel like I got duped by his words. Like, he put me in a situation where I gotta be hanging around just in case, you know? It means I can't just do as I please. Though I'm pretty sure my turn won't come around, because no spirit's ever gonna win against both of you. I guess that's all I wanted to say then. Give my regards to him. Okay. That's the end of the voicemail. I'll take every opportunity to say it. Please don't look at the time when I've been saving and playing this game, please. Please, pretty please. Um... Also, it's, it's light outside now, so it's not- it's like dark in this room. Uh, faculty room. Since afternoon classes are still in session, the faculty room looks emptier than usual. Mr. Conaway, who's sitting at the back of the room, notices my arrival. Ah, you're here, Yashiki. His voice sounds weak, and for some reason his complexion doesn't look so good. Are you alright? I assume you're inquiring about my physical condition. No, I am not well. I've been feeling lethargic and sluggish all morning. Perhaps it's the ravages of stress taking a toll on my body. But that's enough about me. I heard you received a notice yesterday. How did the investigation go? I tell him everything. The sour expression on his face as he listens to me recounting the events of last night tells me all I need to know. Goodness gracious. First Izumi, then Horikoshi, now Kakuta. Three students have gone missing under my watch, and yet again you failed to protect the targeted student. I apologize. Why are you apologizing to me? The students and their parents are the ones you should be apologizing to. Mr. Konoe. You can fire me if you like, but how would you stop the departed then? Ah. Mr. Konoe falls silent at my words. You're right. No matter how many valid complaints I have, it doesn't change the fact that you're the only hope I have of rectifying this situation. I let out an overly exaggerated sigh. I understand the situation he's in. Plus, what else can I do other than threaten him to stop bothering me? However, one more victim and you'll be dismissed. Sakamoto has backed me into a corner. She's suspicious of you, especially in regards to Doryo and Kinu Kinukawa. But she's misunderstanding the situation. Your last chance, understood? Yeah. Good. That's all from me, then. Don't let me down, Yashiki. 
I leave the faculty room, feeling Mr. Konoe still staring daggers into my back. Honestly, I couldn't care less if Mr. Konoe and Sakamoto suspect me, but if I get kicked off campus, I won't be able to investigate, and I know I'm the only one who can pursue the departed and bring this to an end. I can't afford to make any more mistakes. A chime sounds over the speakers. Looks like class is over already. What do I do now? I really want to start doing some investigating, but I have no idea where to start. The Departed, who is still hiding at Konoehara Academy, is playing their cards as well. There don't seem to be any clues left. If I have to pick one spot that still has some ties to them, the clock tower seems like the prime spot. During summer vacation, Doryo and Michiho saw the female doll in the red dress there. At that moment, their bodies were afflicted with a curse. If the Departed was the one who caused it, then that tower is probably connected with them. There might be something in there. But Doryo can't find the key. Yeah, we can't get in there. Should I go visit her? Sure. Doryo is standing near the window when I enter the student council room. She notices my presence right away and turns to me. Ah, so you're here today. I heard about Kakuta from Michiho. Yeah, it was really unfortunate. Say, Doryo, is the key to the clock tower still missing? Yes, I've been looking for it everywhere. You see, just like that, the thin thread that might lead me to some answers has been severed. Um, about that clock tower. One time, the clock tower doll I saw made the school newspaper. I was skimming through the school's old newspapers this morning, hoping to get information about the departed, and then I found an article about a female doll. Mr. Conaway told me the school's historical records were lost due to war damage, but for it to have been buried in the school newspaper archives. Aren't you squeamish when it comes to horror stories and the likes? What made you do that? Oh, um, I just wanted to be of some help. Uh, thank you for that. No problem. Glad to be able to hear that from you. Can you tell me the details of that rumor? Yes. There was a rumor going around Konoehara Academy. Sixty years ago, the first headmaster built the clock tower to commemorate the school's 10th anniversary, a stylish stone clock tower that stood tall in the remote countryside of Konoehara. Many students were wondering what the inside of the tower was like. Overcome with curiosity, some eventually snuck into the tower. What they saw inside the tower was the first headmaster's collection. There were a lot of antique things, but the item that caught the attention of the most people was a doll wearing a red wedding dress that lay on a stone altar. Rumours of the doll spread in no time, because everyone was interested in its origin. However, the first headmaster had already passed away by that time, so he was unable to answer those burning questions. With nobody to tell the truth, wild speculation regarding the doll ran unchecked. The first headmaster, who'd always been fond of antique goods, had bought that doll from a European family. It's a cursed doll that was modelled after young girls who became sacrifices. The first headmaster had a craftsman make the doll to enshrine the deities of Konoehara. It's a doll made to calm the soul of a student who lost their fiancé and committed suicide. No definitive answer was ever found because there wasn't anyone around who knew the truth. In the end, everyone forgot about the doll in the clock tower once the war broke out. Okay. And that was the rumor featured in the school newspaper. It's truly an interesting story, but the rumor has so many variations regarding the origin of the doll. Which one is the truth, if any? Right, let me confirm one thing. Are there any rumors about the doll moving? No, none at all. Oh, okay. There are people who have seen the female doll, but not when she's moving. Guess I'm the only one who's witnessed it. I've got to go soon. Thanks, Dorio. I hope that information could help you in some way. I have to head out as well. The teachers told us not to stay at school. Okay, bye. I say goodbye to Dorio and leave the student council room. The rumours of the clock tower involve a doll in a red, red wedding dress that is placed on an altar inside, however no one knows its origins. It's the same doll that shows up everywhere I go. I need to find out if the doll and the departed are related, in addition to a way in addition to a way to enter the clock tower itself. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, I will see you in the next one.